Today, I want to show how we can build a new website project and go through logging time and invoicing for that project with the model of a more or less a fixed bid, but with a time profit sharing, meaning that if we go under budget on that fixed bid, we can actually split the profit that comes from going under budget. So let's create a project. And the first step of creating a project is inserting your milestones, budget, or hours. We can always quickly insert a template below for web development, SEO, any sort of campaigns that we're running. But I would like to show you how we can quickly set up milestones and tasks underneath those, assign a budget hours, and assign actually people to those particular tasks. In a website, there are usually two big milestones, the design and the concept of a website, then the actual implementing, coding, and rolling out of the website. So let's create those two milestones just to keep it extremely simple. And usually in the design, there's some sort of mock-up and a wireframe. And in the mock-up, I would like to put a fixed budget of a design rate relating back to the mock-up and maybe two hours of work. For the wireframe, I'm actually going to use a staff rate and assign this to Janice, who is a, a designer on the team. And we'll give her three hours to work on this wireframe. So now what you can see is three hours multiplied by Janice's rate at 150 an hour is going to combine to make $450 an hour. The same goes for mock-up. At 150 flat rate, you're able to put the tasks. Let's just actually change this to make it a little bit odd so you can see the differences. Okay, and the next milestone is actually the coding out. And we have some HTML and CSS we need to put together. So here's the overarching two milestones. I'm going to quickly put some digital developer rates on the CSS at a higher rate. And then all of this funnels up to a milestone level. So the tasks follow up to milestones and milestones all add up to this high level budget. So this is a way to build even though we're building or eventually charging on a fixed bid basis, it's a way to build up our whole entire project using the time and materials functionality, which makes it really nice when we start looking at hybrid models like we're talking today, is going to incorporate it really nicely into invoicing and tracking. Now, the last thing, if you notice, is a Gantt chart and the overall flow of how we want our project to be delivered. Now, let's say we want the mockups to take a few days and wireframe is going to take a few days as well. So it has a drag and drop functionality of moving items around, which makes it really easy to visualize the overall flow of the project. Then coding is going to happen after design, which means it's dependent on design actually occurring. So now I can start setting dependencies, meaning that Coding has to happen after design, but it can probably happen right before the end of the design because we have a good sense of what we need to code out. And just to make sure that the project is delivered on time, we can actually stagger it and have it happen before. So now that we have the overall structure and flow of the project, we're able to build something very concrete, but can shift and change on the front end. Essentially what we're doing is we're building a foundation for the house that we're about to build. So now let's start logging some time on it. There are very easy ways to log time throughout the system. One is logging right here from the project plan, which most project managers hang out on, but not a lot of designers and web devs. They would log into their automated timesheet or their task board to log time, not have to get bogged down by the details. And what I'm doing is I'm creating internal activities or notes to the rest of the team with a time log entry, which allows me to start communicating internally what I'm working on and then also duly logging time. 
Okay, so now that we have done all the design, let's complete the design and move to the proving work and invoicing phase of this milestone. As a project manager, I can come in and I can see exactly what Janice or anyone else on the team has worked on, their amount of time. And I particularly like it that it tracks back to the notes or the internal emails that people are sending to in, from each other because that gives a good sense for the project manager on what time is being logged and then also tracking it back to physically what happened. So it's giving project managers really good insight before they send an invoice off to their customer so that when the customer calls and says, hey, where did that two hours go? They have a very, very good answer. So now let's create an invoice based on that time that we logged. This invoice would be a first month invoice or a first milestone invoice. And instead of presenting budget, we're charging for time and materials. As long as it falls underneath the budget, we're good on charging for time and materials here. So if you notice those four hours that I've logged, constitute to $654 that's going directly on this line item called design. And if you drill in here, you can see the general ledger code and all that information which gets synced over to Xero or QuickBooks. Okay, now it's time to email the client that invoice, save it, and initiate the sync. What you're seeing is a really fast way to take a project and deliver it with an invoice. HDMZ, just one of our customers, was able to bring their invoicing time from 10 days to two days by incorporating Affinity Live into their workflow, just because a lot of their time entry was a very manual process and they brought it into the project right here. Also, if you aren't currently logging time or aren't invoicing for time and materials, this is the first product in which you can start doing that and start tracking time. What we're finding is the time and materials model and especially the fixed model that I'm showing right now really ensures a consistent delivery of revenue and also makes both sides a little bit happier that they know what time is being logged. They're actually sharing the profits if they go under budget, which is great for both sides. So now I've lost some time now in the coding milestone and I'm going to complete this. Before I go through the work approval, I just wanna show one last thing for how to log time. I've been logging time through a note, but you can also log time like I was mentioning before through email and meetings. We have a native two-way sync with the Gmail suite as well as Outlook and Office 365 which means that any emails that I'm sending around a project, they can actually be responded to on your client side on the email, not having to come back into Affinity Live. And all that time being sent around there can be captured really easily. You'll notice this timer going down here, and then we suggest automatically five minutes from any email that is sent outside the system for starting to log on your project. So it's not only coming in and logging time, it's also being intelligent in the way that we log time. Okay, so now that we've approved that next milestone, let's create an invoice. And this will be the, the second milestone or the actual coding phase or the second month, however you want to put it. Again, we go to time and materials and you notice the $900 that hits the budget exactly for what we we're planning on the coding phase. So now I can invoice this particular item as well. Okay, now we're more or less finished with the project, but we did go over budget by 9%, fantastic. Let's look at the, the invoice to see how much we, we went under budget. Okay, we went $150 under budget. In this profit sharing model, what we can easily do is put a profit sharing invoice. Where instead of doing now time and materials, I'm gonna keep it at percent of remaining budget, which says, well, we have about $150 remaining, 
But since this is a profit sharing, let's actually share that with the customer. I'm only going to invoice you 75 because we did in fact go on your budget. Fantastic. So this would be the final invoice that would go out for this particular project. Okay, fantastic. So now that we've completed the project, we've sent out all the invoices, we delivered it on time, under budget, made both sides happy, and we're actually able to share some of the profit in the meantime. If you'd like more information about how to set up projects like this, whether it be time and materials, fixed bid, or some really fun hybrid models that we're seeing a lot of professional service firms using Affinity Live starting to incorporate into their workflow and making their customers really happy while getting paid for them. So if you would like to sign up for a trial, please go over to affinitylive.com and click request trial. Thank you.